The pencil. Well done, Tom Thomas. Your mom's birthday's today and you're still sleeping. Hey, what's that? It's a drawing, a portrait of his mom. In my opinion, this mom doesn't look very much like Tom Thomas's mom. Maybe he didn't get to finish the picture yet. He was tired and passed out. This is not good. We gotta do something. Ah, we can help him. The pencil's right here. A pencil has a lead inside. It's the lead that makes the drawing. Only lead doesn't grow on trees. It's made out of a mineral called graphite that's mined out of the Earth's crust. But how does the lead get inside a pencil? It's simple. Pencils are made with rods of lead and two wooden boards. Grooves are cut into the boards and the lead's placed in them. The halves are glued together and cut into pencils. The artist's tool is ready. This isn't going to work. Oh, give me a place to stand, and I shall move the pencil through the air. Try and get it closer to the drawing. You gotta lift it up a little. You gotta push it harder. <laughs> no, like, we're blockheads. Look, there's a pencil sharpener. A piece of lead. That's all we need. All right. Let's check out how it was done by the old scores. By the great masters, like us. Yeah, she could use a little more hair. And a hat, too. And a bow around her neck. Beautiful. And your sock has got to be in there. Yeah, let's keep drawing. Tom Thomas, are you still sleeping? Fixies? No need to thank us. Uh, where is my drawing? What have you done to it? If Mom sees this piece of art you created, she'll go and faint. I know it. From happiness, right? Fright's more like it. Does that look like my mom? Uh, well, then give it to your dad. Your dad won't faint. I know it. But it's my mom's birthday, not my dad's. You gotta be kidding me. There's also a famous painting like that. It's called the Black Square. It's a classic. You don't think she'll like it? People want to remember the highlights of their lives. And so they take photos of nature, of their families, of themselves, even of the food they eat. People have been doing this even before the invention of photography, by drawing. An artist might draw the sun, a river, some apple trees, and soon he's made a landscape. And if the apples aren't on trees, but on a plate next to a vase, cup, or basket, then a still life is what it's called. If a person's in the center, then it's called a portrait. And when artists make pictures of themselves, it's called a self-portrait. Of course, it's easier for us to take a quick photo of things we pass along the way. But just like the old masters, we put a piece of our souls into our drawings. And if you draw more often, you'll see it for yourself. I promise you that. Maybe you could just give her one of your older drawings. Maybe you should just erase the mess you made of this one. That could work. Uh, erasing's gotta be easier than drawing. Uh. Whatever. There's no way you can make it worse. Uh. Hey, I think I know a way you can fix it. You can use the eraser for drawing. A portrait. Uh, portraits don't seem to work out too well for us. But a still life drawing is a piece of cake. Super! Uh-huh. Pretty good, right? Tom Thomas! Everything's on the table for breakfast. Mom, happy birthday. I drew this present for you. Thank you, Tom Thomas. What a lovely still life, so unusual. I tried really hard. We'll hang it up on the wall. 
Now, let's go eat. What would Tom Tom is if done without us? Yeah. Whenever you get into a jam, your real friends will always show up to rescue you. The virus. Tom Thomas! Pass him on the turn! Good job! You're almost there! Now put the pedal to the metal! Yay! Ha! Take that, Johnny! You lose! You want to race him again? We can. We just finished the last level. Oh, We were just getting started. Wait a second. Let's see what it says here. Congratulations. Your prize is a smartphone and a collection of brand new levels to race. All right. Class, click on it. It's not smart to just click on random buttons. Hmm. There's nothing to worry about. Hey, what's going on? Someone messed with the numbers. There you go. Didn't I warn you guys? Do you think it might have been Johnny? Johnny! Of course! He got upset that we won, so he put on the cap of invisibility. Then he snuck into the room and deleted everything from the computer. Stop! What are you talking about? A cap of invisibility. This has nothing to do with Johnny at all. Looks like you got a virus. Then we need to get Tom Thomas's mom in here. What for? Isn't it obvious? She's a doctor. She'll get rid of this virus in no time. That won't work. Quit it. A computer with a virus isn't treated like that. A doctor won't be able to help here, especially a dentist like your mother. Then who can help us? You need special software for that. Antivirus. <laughs> A computer virus is a destructive computer program. It can not only delete or steal important information, but completely destroy your computer. And the scariest thing about this virus is that it spreads very quickly and can infect the other computers on the network, very much like a human illness. To find and stop these viruses, you need to use an antivirus program. Antivirus programs also protect computers against new infections. And by the way, your dad's computer uses antivirus software. And mine doesn't have it? No, you won't let anyone near your computer. You never have any time. Dad, let's do it later, okay? I've got to finish one more round. It'll only take a minute. Oh, look at that. The virus is starting to wipe out everything now. That means this computer will disappear. And this room, too. And... And all of us! Stop! Stop! Quit panicking! We have to save the computer right away! Tom Thomas, your dad has a box with antivirus software. Bring it! Games, music, cartoons! There are so many interesting things on the internet, but just like in the physical world, you have to follow some rules when you're online. First, you should only visit websites that you know. Sometimes a destructive virus could be hiding behind a pretty picture, and there are plenty of scammers on the internet. That's why you should never give anybody you don't know well your address or send an SMS so you can download a free game. If you happen to get a letter or a text from a stranger, you should show it to your parents right away. Only communicate with people that you know. And don't just sit all day playing on the internet. There's still nothing better than going outside and playing with friends in the fresh air. Software. How come? There's no need. No, we have to. That program should only be installed by an adult. Otherwise, your parents will figure out you got help from Fixies. Sorry about that. All done. And here comes my dad. 
Dad, will you install this on my computer, please? You need it right away? How about a bit later? No, we can't keep putting it off. There you go. Now your computer is protected. How come you became so responsible all of a sudden? Oh, Dad, you don't know what kind of viruses are out there roaming the net. You're so right. Plastic. Chuggy, go! Chuggy, go! Keep Tom, going! Tom, faster! You can do it! Faster! Tom, come Tom, on! Chug, just chug! Oh, chug! Chug, chug! chug. Go. You're go. almost go. there! Titties! That was one fast time. If you could just keep up your training, you could beat the record! <sighs> Yes. Yes, you're right. Time to take matters into our own hands. Please hold on. Tom Thomas, did you take out the trash? Uh, I didn't have time yet. Good. That's just what I wanted to hear. Uh, and that bottle on your desk, do you need it? That's great. Thanks. I've got five more of them. And this is only the beginning of our mission. Operation Rescue. What is your dad up to? Operation Rescue could be... Your dad might be a superhero! Do you think? <laughs> no, like, you're too funny for words. What's so funny about that? Who else would be taking part in rescue operations? <laughs> and those bottles, you think he needs them for heroic deeds? Or maybe he decided that it's time to sort your plastic waste. Do, Do what? what? Plastic is a durable and practical man-made material. Lots of useful things are made out of it. Packaging, toys, appliances, and even furniture. But you shouldn't just throw out things that are made of plastic. Nature can't digest it, and so all that plastic will leave the Earth covered with a thick layer of trash. To avoid that catastrophe, we all can help. Put plastic into specially marked containers, and then instead of harming the planet, it can be turned into something useful. No, that doesn't make any sense. Simka, superheroes do not collect trash. And we'll prove it, you'll see. Of course, it's our evolution. I mean, a revolution. Together, we'll save planet Earth. You're so lucky, Tom Thomas. Together, we'll save planet Earth. Tom Thomas, do you have any more plastic in your room here that I can take? One second. You still use those things. For such a noble mission, it's not a problem. All our useful things should be taken care of. Dad, I really want to do it with you. Want to do what? What you're doing. You know, the operation about saving the planet, like you said on the phone. Ah, you mean sorting out the plastic, don't you? Sure. I've got a couple of these boxes filled up already. Will you help me take them to get recycled? Really? What for? Just dump it out with the trash. Son, if we don't start doing what we can to recycle, I'm afraid our planet <sighs> will become one big dump. There's lots of stuff that humans just throw out that can be transformed into something totally different. For instance, an ordinary plastic bottle can be turned into a ballpoint pen, or a watch, or a chair, or dishes, or even some clothing. For example, there are some factories where old plastic is sorted, ground into pieces and cleaned, and then stretched into thread that can be used to make brand new clothing. Isn't that fantastic? But this is only possible if people learn to collect and dispose of unneeded bottles, bags, cups, and other plastic separately from the rest of their trash. Imagine how happy nature will be when the piles and piles of plastic disappear from our woods and from our seas. Let's take care of our planet together. I thought you were trying to rescue the planet like a superhero. Actually, we are superheroes, 
And we're also a bit like magicians. Really? Give me a second. See this shirt here? It's made out of recycled plastic like that. Cool, right? No joke! So, you ready? Then it's time to go. Uh, those lucky humans with their trash to sort. And we? We fixies do all that we can to make appliances live longer. That way they don't get thrown away. And we should sort our trash as well. That's a good idea. The time machine. Oh, wow. What kind of device is that? Maybe an alarm clock? No, this is a time machine. Beep, 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 beep. Time machines, they don't exist. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> what a shame. I learned that, studied that. Well done, Tula. Oh. Oh. What did I just bump into? What do you mean, what? Into a time machine. But I thought time machines aren't for real. Of course they are. You get in and take off for the future. Or the past. Splendid. Lots of us would love to be able to travel in a time machine. Maybe to go back in time and fix a bad grade. Or to get a peek into the future. Of course it would be interesting. But time travel isn't possible. And thank goodness! Just imagine how mixed up everything could get. Someone brings back a dinosaur from the past, while someone else brings aliens from the future. No one would need to invent anything. Appliances would sit unused, and fixies would have no work to do. That's awful! So you've got no idea of the answer. I studied this, but I don't remember. Too bad, because tomorrow we've got a hard test. Make sure you're prepared. I'm sure I'm gonna fail. You're gonna pass? You studied all of this, right? So? So you just need to stop worrying so much, that's all. I wish I could. <laughs> Poor girl. How can we help her? Hey, I know how. This morning, Tula believed that that thing over there is a real time machine. Sounds like an anti-scientific plan. Stop worrying. It's simple. We'll send you to tomorrow. You'll sit down, take the test, and come right back here. I wish I could go. It's like a dress rehearsal. The main thing's not to worry. Then what do I do? Uh, you just pull on that wire and you'll get them back. Well, time to go. Wow, it's tomorrow. Hi there. Are you ready? Uh-huh. Grandpus got sick, so I'll be giving you your tests. I'm scared. Don't worry. It's just a rehearsal. Well then, who had the best test? Congratulations, Tula! Oh, so cool! Awesome! That wasn't scary at all. Impressive! By the way, what's wrong with the professor? Uh, Grandpus! Uh, you know, don't you? A bolt fell on his head. You dropped it, remember? I did? Yeah, yesterday. I'm not sure I like this future. Well, how did it go there? Later. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Oh! Leave this on until tomorrow. What is this? Come back! No! If I do, I could hurt you! Me? What for? Wouldn't it be incredible to travel into the future and see what you will become? Unfortunately, that's only possible in our dreams. But if you have a dream and aren't afraid of challenges and setbacks, your future can turn out just the way you imagined. Do you want to become a champion? Then you need to start your training right away. Do you dream of becoming the best programmer in the world? Then first pull up that grade in math class. Do you dream of sailing the oceans? Then you'll need to do a lot of reading because a captain has so much he needs to learn. Start creating your future right now. And we Fixies will be right there to help you, making sure the machines you need to reach your dreams will keep on working for years and years to come. Hey there, are you ready? Uh-huh. So far, everything's exactly the same. Tula, take this, please. It worked. 
and pass out the tests. You may begin. These questions are different. Who had the best test? Congratulations, Tula! What am I worried about? I know everything is going to be fine. Tish! Oh, uh, well then. All of your test results are great. <sighs> Only none of you could guess what this device is. What do you mean? Isn't it a time machine? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's for <laughs> automatically watering plants, that's all. You see? Cool, right? Wow, it's fantastic. So hang on, you guys tricked me? But you passed the test, right? Well, all right. Then I forgive you. <laughs> the jewel. Tom Thomas, it's time to eat. Where did it go? Chusaka. Did you see this tiny little... I can't believe now I'm asking a dog. Tom Thomas, are you looking for us? Hey, Fixies, maybe you can help me. One of these stones is missing. And so? And so, this pin is very valuable. And so's the stone. If I don't find the stone soon, it's going to be the end. Honey, your lunch is getting cold. There's no reason to panic. Your precious stone will be found. Wait a sec. Can stones really be precious? Of course they can. Gemstones are the most rare and beautiful of all stones. But it's not easy to find them. Diamonds, emeralds, rubies, sapphires, people find them underground and inside of mountains. Brave divers go to the bottom of the sea to find pearls. People have performed heroic acts and committed daring crimes to get these precious jewels. The magical shine of gems can both enchant and ruin. Remember, only gems acquired honestly bring happiness. I can't find it anywhere. Maybe Chusaka took it. She saw that it was valuable and... Um, you're right. Chusaka? Give us back the gem, all right? Give it back, we said. Why are you making Chusaka angry? Because she has to give the stone back. What stone, Simka? One that calls a ton. Dogs are supposed to keep treasure safe, but this one eats them. Maybe you didn't look carefully. For example, did you check inside that, that flower pot? pot. <laughs> <laughs> the sticking's just a waste. How could it end up in here? Because I know this is where we left it. Oh, is that so? All right, spit it out. <gasps> look at this. A diamond! This will look absolutely perfect on my back mat But I was the one that found it. It will look perfect on mine, too. Let's bring our pack mats and try it on them. We'll put it here for safekeeping. Well, who could have taken it? <laughs> we still need to check inside of Chusaka! <laughs> You gotta be joking. She'll eat you up. <gasps> Where are you going, huh? Inside Chusaka to get the stone out. No, I don't. Please. <laughs> I'm ready to do anything my friend needs me to. Huh? By any chance, are you looking for this? Huh? <gasps> Where in the world did you find it? found a buried diamond. It looks like a diamond, but to be sure, we'll have to conduct a test. A raw diamond looks like an ordinary stone. But after cutting and polishing each of its facets, that special stone transforms into a rare and very expensive jewel that can adorn a necklace, a crown, or a museum's display case. The truth is, only a small part of all found diamonds is used for jewelry. It's because a diamond is also the hardest rock on the planet. That makes it perfect for cutting glass. Diamonds are used in making strong drill bits and cutting blades. Many important medical instruments could not be made without them. With the help of diamonds, it's even possible to drill through a mountain when building a tunnel. 
that's just how valuable diamonds are. They can cut a pipe and go well with a dress. Isn't it pretty? Only it's not a... Tom Thomas! We found a star! Oh, oh. And now it's gone. Fixies, I was sure my precious present was gone. And who is the present for? Katya, I think she'll like it. Now, I've got to tell you, Tom Thomas, that's not a precious stone. You got nothing but glass there. I know. But it doesn't matter. What? I was risking my life for the sake of a piece of glass? First, it was for the sake of your friend. And second, the cost of the gift doesn't matter. It's only the thought that counts. The star. And so, this is our solar system. And it consists of... Friends, you're not going to believe it. I found... I discovered an unknown star. That is superb, Kali. Yeah. And today, journalists will visit the laboratory for an interview. Who's going to be interviewed? If you weren't late, you'd know that. I had to do my hair. They're here. Everyone hide. There are lots of galaxies in the universe with billions of hot glowing spheres that everybody knows as stars. Stars are each born out of huge clouds of gas and dust that are called nebulas. We see stars in the sky as tiny dots, but that's only because they are very, very far away. The closest star to our planet is the sun. Even though the sun isn't the hugest star, it still gives us the heat and light we need to live. Professor Eugenius is a celebrity now, on a global scale. Yeah. Hey, did you see? Verda also got on the cover. No joke. Where? <gasps> And I think we look pretty good together. So, who wants my autograph? <laughs> we'll have to wait till after school. Uh, it's time to go. Hey, aren't you going? Not right now. My colleague and I have more important business. What colleague? The professor. Both of us have become celebrities. Verda, you got on that cover totally by accident. Uh, 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 somebody's jealous. <laughs> Well, we've got our new star. <laughs> now, what should I name it? A uh, colleague? Huh? Why don't you name the new star Verda? After all, it does sound pretty. Verda, Verda, hmm. Like a vertex whirling around. <laughs> That's a great idea. It's a shame you didn't get my autograph. Because that new star now has my name, Verda. <laughs> And now an elaborate celebration needs to be thrown in my honor. I mean, mine and the professor's, of course. What celebration are you talking about? With a red carpet and flowers? Why are you just standing there? Make it happen! The poor girl thinks she's a star. Absolutely. So what can we do about it? With lunatics, it's better not to argue. That's what I read. Then let's play your silly game. Your Majesty, your red carpet awaits. Then unroll it. And the flowers? Am I supposed to do everything myself? Of course not. Here, Your Highness, your crown. All right, now we're talking. I am a star. She's totally lost it. Mm-hmm. He's coming. Finally, finally, my dream is reality. Ah, oh, my little fixie friends, it's you here. I'm so honored you gathered here to congratulate me today. <laughs> us? Yes, us, them, we. We all should celebrate. No, I mean you and I. <laughs> now show us what you're carrying. Uh, of course, the certificate. It says this star discovered by Professor Eugenius has been registered with the name VE03732. What? Oh. <laughs> That's what we 
should start calling our big star from now on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's so funny? A clear night is perfect for searching in the sky for constellations. The easiest one to find is the Great Bear or the Big Dipper, which looks like a soup ladle. If you draw a line through the two outside stars of the Big Dipper, you'll find the bright North Star, which is part of a constellation called the Little Bear or the Little Dipper. A bit further is the W-shaped Cassiopeia. And these three stars that are next to each other are well known as the Belt of Orion. If you draw a line through them, you'll find a star named Sirius. It's part of the Greater Dog constellation, and it's the brightest star in the night sky. And on the other side of it, there is the star Aldebaran of the constellation Taurus. And these are but a few of the most visible stars. It's not even possible to imagine how many stars there really are in the universe. Tula? I'm here. Fire. Here. VE73032? Is that someone new? Yeah, we've got a new student. She's a star. A new giant star. <laughs> <laughs> the helicopter. It's very important, and I need your advice. Hey, uh, sorry I'm late. Oh, girls, I can hardly wait to see this. Here it goes. Us. Hop in! There's no way! We're busy! Doing what? Something important! Go find somewhere else to fly! You got it! No problem! Now back to our job! Controller, Digit's our pilot. Uh, uh, Digit, fly on. Uh, uh. <laughs> Helicopters fly with the help of propellers. The biggest one is called the main rotor blade. When the engine turns it, the rotor pushes the air with such a powerful force that it lifts the helicopter up off the ground. Of course, helicopters can't fly as fast as airplanes, but they have the ability to easily land on a small patch of ground. And unlike airplanes, helicopters can hover in the air for a long time and even fly backwards. Digit, turn us to the left. Huh? <laughs> Hang on, hang on. This is one amazing rotor-driven machine. Leonardo da Vinci himself had a design for one. And now look who's controlling it. It really is impressive. You're a total ace on that controller. And so smart. And brave. <laughs> the girls really like boys like that. That's how I roll. Sure, yeah, you're great. Now land it. Digit! <laughs> oh! Ah! The wall! <sighs> no, like, don't panic. We're gonna have to jump! Whoa! What about me? For you distracting our pilot, everything would have been okay. A real pilot, you know, shouldn't get distracted. And first he has to learn how to fly on a simulator. Right, Digit? Uh-huh. That's true, but we don't have one. Don't go anywhere. Airplanes, helicopters. 
helicopters, trains, and even cars are complicated machines that can be a challenge to navigate. And if you don't watch what you're doing, you can easily end up having an accident. That's why future pilots, train operators, and drivers all take comprehensive training classes that include learning how to fly a plane or drive a train using simulators. This, for instance, is an exact copy of a cockpit, only without wings and with screens for windows. You pull the controller and the cabin moves the way it would if you were actually taking off. And on the screens, the Earth is racing under the clouds. It takes your breath away. Commercial pilots are required to take part in many simulations like this before they're allowed to pilot a real airplane. Our pilot simulator is ready to go. Oh, wow. And I'll be the first one to try it. Here we go. Ugh, kids. Right, Digit? <coughs> I'm only going over there just to take a look. Uh, you know how those two can behave. I'll just it's watch my them. Turn again. Hey, wait! It's my turn now! Boys are just silly. They're never serious. They just joke around. <gasps> Speaking of serious, we have some important business to take care of. <gasps> You're, You're right! right. <laughs> I can't figure out where I should put them. What about... On the pack a mat Oh, that's a very serious problem. Yeah. This is really important, not something silly like those boys are doing. The frying pan. Woohoo! Can you do this? Easy! How about this? And voila! I could be on <clears throat> skates and still do it. If I was on skates, I could jump ten times in a row. Well, I could do a hundred with my eyes shut. Then let's see them. There's no skating rink. There will be. What will, will there be? A skating rink. Where? In the frying pan. Uh-oh. All right, my bragging buddies. Go get your skates. Fixies love playing sports. You might find Fixie adults working out with weights or maybe working on a gymnastics routine. Fixie kids love having Fixie board contests or taking part in parkour competitions where they have to run, jump, and hop over all sorts of obstacles. These kinds of competitions usually take place inside of sophisticated appliances. Orienteering is held inside these appliances, too. That's when Fixies use a map to follow a complicated route. And the route is quite exact. You can't make one wrong turn. But the Fixies' favorite game has got to be hide-and-seek. Nobody can compete with them in this game. You don't believe me? <laughs> Watch! The rink is frozen. <laughs> So, who's first? Nola, come on! <laughs> well, are you going to jump? <laughs> wow, class! <laughs> and that's all? Not at all. No lick! No lick! No lick! No He's lick! not gonna make it. Too short a start. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do anymore because I'm injured. Sure, say no more, Mr. Braggart. Then it's your turn, Simka. Now watch and see how it's done. La 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 Oh, wow. Nolik, you never had a chance. Like always. She gets in my way, and now she's gonna win. Nolik, do you really want to beat her? Uh-huh. You see the salt? What? You think we should cook her? Of course not. But if we put some salt on the ice, it'll melt. Simka, didn't you say that you were gonna skate with your eyes closed? Piece of cake! What? Can't do it? Watch and learn. One. And two. Well done. And three. <laughs> hey, this is salt. That 
wasn't fair, guys. You wouldn't have done 100 jumps anyway. Let's start the contest all over again, but this time we play by the rules. Oh, look, there's a scratch in the pan. What? What a disaster. You can cook just about anything in a frying pan. Meat, fish, vegetables. In order to stop food from sticking to the pan, modern frying pans are covered with a non-stick coating like Teflon. You can cook in these pans without even using oil. And they're easy to clean. But you have to treat this kind of kitchenware very carefully. It's better not to use metal spatulas or forks that can scratch it. Because you shouldn't cook food in a pan that has scratches on it. It can be really dangerous for your health. Yeah, this pan's completely shot. It's all because of your dumb bet. It's all because someone was cheating. Mom's back. Please, Simka, help me out, will you? I'll give you any wish you want. Or three. No, five. Five? <laughs> I can help you. If you guys jump up and down a hundred times on one leg, we could do two hundred. Tom Thomas, what do you say we make those crepes? These crepes are perfect. I just love cooking with this pan. Why are you jumping? I want to make my legs stronger. <laughs> anyway, you never could have jumped a hundred times in there. Bet on it? Uh-oh. Oh! <laughs> the telescope. That was scary. Is Nolik with you? He said he was going to help us out. <sighs> Beautiful. Whoa, just look at all those stars. It's just like magic, this telescope. Splendid. The simplest telescope is a tube with two lenses. They gather and refract light. We look through a telescope at a faraway moon and see craters, mountains, and crevices on its surface as if they are very close. A telescope helps us examine stars and comets, distinguish the colors and shapes of planets, and find their moons. But it's only possible to look at the sun through a telescope if it has a special filter to protect your eyes from getting damaged. But what's really cool is that it spins! <laughs> No, really! Well, should we get going? Aren't we waiting for Nolik? He'll catch up. I'm gonna leave him a note. Nolik, we're in the computer. Hey! Here I am! Hello? Where is everybody? could finally see how our solar system is organized. The closest planet to our sun is a small planet called Mercury. 
then comes the planet Venus, then our Earth, then Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, the furthest planet. Is it possible that life only exists on Earth? So far, not even living bacteria has been found on any of the other planets, let alone human life. But we'd like to believe that deep in space, someone is looking through a telescope, and just like us, dreaming of finding their outer space brethren. That's where it was! Come on out, Fixie Eater! We're gonna need to use live bait. Where are you gonna get it from? It's me? Nolik, he knows you already. Don't be afraid. We won't let him hurt you. There's no way. Fixie Eater, come out right now. Ah! I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of you. B -b Barely. Ah! Help me! Ah! Catching fire! Ugh! I gotcha! It's Buggy! That's who you just caught! Then where's the Fixie Eater? Did you see the monster? Look at those jaws! Just like the monster! Nolik, show us where you saw the Fixie Eater. Up there! I saw him through the telescope! Buggy, could you please go up to that corner over there? Uh-huh. And now yawn. <laughs> Take a look. Ah! The Fixie Eater! Poor Buggy! What do you think? Concrete. When will you be back from your fishing trip? Before dinner. So you won't have time to hang up the mirror again? Hm. If it's not one thing, it's another. Um, we were just planning to hang it right now. Uh, it'll only take us two minutes, and then we'll go fishing. Buggers! Huh? What do you want, Nolik? What am I gonna go on a fishing trip with you? You know fixies don't go fishing. But you promised me that today. We will go and visit the aquarium. I was only planning on going there to clean it. So let's go fishing while we're at it. We'll pretend. Poppers, please. Okay, Nolik. But we'll just pretend to. Hooray! You're the best poppers ever! Nah, those won't work. Why won't they? Because our walls are concrete. They're much too hard for nails. See that? It's gonna need to be drilled. Hmm, I guess we'll need to use a special drill bit that's right for this wall. Concrete is a very strong building material made out of small stones, sand, cement, and water. When the concrete mixture dries, it becomes very hard, like a solid piece of rock. For building houses, bridges, and other large constructions, reinforced concrete is what people use. To reinforce the concrete, it is poured into a mold with steel bars. When you drill into a reinforced concrete wall, you have to be careful not to hit the metal bars. Poppers! Shh, humans. Mm-mm, not big enough. It won't hold up this mirror. But it's all we've got. <sighs> So we'll have to go and buy another. That stinks. Means there's no time to go fishing now. Actually, I think this will hold it for a little while. <laughs> that looks great. So, ready? Papoose! Huh? Do we own fishing rods? We don't, but we'll figure it out. I really don't like how that mirror's hanging. That's what happens when people are in a rush to finish. We're fixies. We never do things like that. Papoose, we going fishing or not? Yes, we will. After we take care of this mirror. Oh. 
In ancient Rome, volcanoes helped make concrete. After they erupted, people would mix the volcanic ash with stones, lime, and sand. This concrete was used in many of the famous buildings constructed in that time. For instance, the Pantheon with its concrete dome. And this one is the famous Colosseum. It was also made with concrete. The Colosseum is almost 2,000 years old, but it's still standing strong. Later, when that land was conquered by other nations, people forgot about concrete and how to make it. Thank goodness that 200 years ago, they suddenly realized what a great material it is, and they reinvented concrete. It's true when they say, oh, everything new is well forgotten old. Pop, Bruce, carry on. Haste is the mother <clears throat> of imperfection. Hmm, it looks like I ran out of wire. Mm, lousy timing. I've got to get to the warehouse. Warehouse? That means we're not going fishing. No, Lick. A promise is a promise, and that means we go. Eh, this should hold for a little while. <laughs> it's funny. We almost left without the fishing rods. Don't panic. We did a good job of anchoring. Remember what I said? Haste is the... Yeah. Yeah, I'm not hearing things. Looks like a trip to the store after all. For screws? Yeah, and a brand new mirror. It looks like today's fishing trip's canceled. And ours is too, Nolik. At least the fish will be happy. The window. Oh, hi there. We're all up. Oh, what are you doing? I'm washing our windows. Uh, it looks like that thing's doing the washing. You guessed it. It's a window washing robot. I borrowed it from a neighbor to try it out. We should buy one for ourselves. I don't get it. We've already got one robot. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, robot. So we'll have two. One for the floors and one for windows. I could clean the windows. But it can be dangerous work. <laughs> What's so dangerous about it? I'll just go and wash them right now. And instead of a robot, we'll buy something uh, useful. Like a skateboard for a boy. I've already got one. So you'll have two. Class. Uh-huh, if you say so. There just so happens to be a dirty window in your office. Let's see how you do with that one. Consider it done. Mm-hmm, and we'll clean the tiles with the robot. A window is much more than just a hole in the wall. Windows provide houses with light, ventilation, and views to the world outside. Modern windows are made with several layers of glass. Between each layer is a space that's filled with air. The air works as insulation to keep heat from escaping outside. Do you know how to tell how many layers of glass your window has? Just shine a flashlight at it. The number of reflections tells you the number of layers. Whoa, what an amazing appliance! Let's go and take a closer look. You really buy me a new skateboard, Dad? That's what I said, but first, I've got a window to wipe. All right, robot, we'll show you. Tom Thomas, Dad can show him himself. <laughs> we really live on a super high floor. Yeah, but the robot isn't afraid of heights. <sighs> Huh. I'll start from this corner. It'll take you forever that way. Admit it, the robot works better. We won't. We're gonna win this thing. Hey, what is he doing? I'm not sure. <sighs> huh? Mom! Mom! The robot made such a mess in there! It's impossible. Look! <laughs> Good joke. 
Just wait. Get how you're cleaning it. Easy. You can talk? You've got to be kidding. And you are misbehaving. You guys? You're the ones trying to stop me? You tried to make the robot look bad, so we had to defend it. It's only because my dad told me I'd get a skateboard. Yeah? For doing a bad thing? Ah, oh, aren't you ashamed of yourself? I am. You learned your lesson, and don't forget, Fixies look out for appliances. The dwellings of most ancient people had basically no windows at all. There may have been a hole up above for letting out smoke from a fire, but that was it. Later, people started splitting open their walls, but the openings were so small that very little light would ever get inside. Mm. The size of windows grew quite a bit over time. People would cover them with animal skins, fabric, paper, or wooden planks to protect themselves from the cold and the wind. When people learned how to mine valuable minerals, they began to cover window openings with thin sheets of a mineral called mica. Windows made of glass were very expensive, and only the richest people could afford them for their homes. But today, it's hard to imagine a window anywhere not covered in glass. <sighs> Everything's washed. And what about the outside? Forget it. I... I quit. Would you wash the back with the robot? Yeah, consider it done. Yeah, you're right. I see. It really is a great appliance. And that washer's defender is even better. You're right about that. Tish! The blood test. Oh, here. Ah. Hi, Tom Thomas. Huh? What, are you fighting with flies? No. Dad signed me up for a class. I'm starting to learn martial arts. Are you going to fight like in the movies? What do you mean? I'm going to star in the movies. I'm going to play a superhero. Yeah! Ah. Ah. He'd be a great windmill for sure. <laughs> Tom Thomas. Is first period free for you tomorrow? Yeah. Excellent. Then in the morning, I can take you in for a blood test. A blood test? Why do I need that? To make sure that you're healthy for your martial arts class. And remember, don't eat anything before the test. Don't worry, it's just a little needle. A little what? Mom! And what if I take some other kind of sport, like chess, for instance? Then I don't need a blood test. What's up? Are you scared? No. Mwah. I'm proud of you. Dad never told me I need a blood test. It looks like our superhero's a little scared. I think I'd be too. Blood sounds scary. Nothing scary about it. A human body has a huge number of little tubes called blood vessels with blood flowing through them. The blood carries oxygen and nutrients to the cells, takes away carbon dioxide from them, and protects them from harmful microbes. To be sure if you're healthy or not, it's often necessary to have a blood test. The most accurate results come from blood that is taken from a vein. The sample is analyzed to see if everything is all right. And if not, the doctor will prescribe a treatment. You see, it's totally safe. And there's nothing scary about it. Mm-hmm. Oh, blood should only be drawn on an empty stomach. What's that mean? It means no eating before the test. And what happens if I eat? Well, then they won't take any blood from you. Hmm, that's an idea. What's an idea? Um, I got no idea. Okay, good night. You're really not scared at all? Mm-mm. For some reason, I don't believe him. Ah? Uh, huh? Hey, what's going on? You're not allowed to eat! Give it back! Hmm. Oh, my mom's coming! <laughs> oh! Tom 
Thomas, did you forget? You're not allowed to eat now. Do I have to have this test? Go on, go get yourself ready. Are you trying to run away? Shh! I thought you wanted to be a superhero. You're being nothing but a coward. I'm not a coward. You are. I'm not. You're acting like one. Anyhow, I'm not going there. Don't even think about it. Nolik, help! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Ready to go? All right, Tom Thomas, get up. It's time. Well, thanks a lot. And from now on, we're not friends. Making an accurate blood analysis is not a simple task. Originally, this work was done by people that would examine a drop of blood under a microscope. Today, in modern laboratories, technicians analyze blood with the help of smart analyzing machines. These machines can do the job much faster, and they don't make mistakes like people can. After you give some blood to be analyzed, the test tube is sent on a real journey to reach the laboratory for analysis. In the laboratory, it moves from one analyzer to another, each one of them examining a different part of your blood. Then, all of the data is put together, and that's it! The blood test is done. You can get an email when the report is ready, and check the results online, so you don't even have to go out to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, huh? Thanks to you, we just lost our friend. It's because he was being a coward. And if it's my fault at all, it's only a little bit. Fixies! Are you here? We're here. Look what I've got! A certificate for bravery! You had the blood test! And you weren't scared? Uh-uh! Look! Way to go! So, are we friends again? Of course we are! All right! Then can you teach me a few of those moves? Yeah, sure! Wow! The coffee maker. Tanish! Hi there, Tom Thomas. Are you ready for school? Uh-huh. And you? I'm helping Masia today for school. Three more patients? How in the world can I do it all? I have that new equipment being delivered, and I'm leading this week's case presentations. Oh, well. Somehow I'll have to figure out how to do it. Um... Good morning. Yeah, just great, huh? I got work piled up to the ceiling. Okay, a cup of coffee is the only thing that can save me today. Now what? The last thing I need is to be late. The coffee maker started its cleaning cycle. She'll have to wait. <clears throat> What's the problem? Why don't you work? Are you going to work or what? <clears throat> Oh, the poor coffee maker! Oh, Tom Thomas's poor mother! That's enough! Work already! What is going on today? <laughs> hey, Mom, come on! Let me give it a try. I can't take any more of this. We've got to help her! I really hope nothing broke in there. Don't worry, we'll get it working. Just distract your mom. Mom, and what if the coffee maker just started working again right now? Would that save your day, you think? Mm-hmm. Early coffee makers would do nothing more than heat up the water and force it through the ground coffee. Today's generation of devices are often called coffee machines. They can do so much more and even remove the mineral deposits themselves. These machines can make your coffee any strength and add milk and sugar, if that's how you like it. And most conveniently, they can grind the coffee beans right before brewing. Just press the button and the fresh cup of coffee is ready. And that aroma. The main thing with any coffee maker is to be nice to it. Then you just give it some time and it starts working by itself. That is just absurd. Restarting it is the first step. Simka, get over there and open and close that contact. Mm -hmm. You see? That's what I was talking about. A coffee maker isn't alive. It's a machine, that's all. Then how come you hit it like you did? Hmm. But if you're really nice to it and you pet it... Then she'll purr. 
hear that? It liked that a lot. Coffee Maker, blink to us when you're ready to start working. Turn on the display. Mm -hmm. See that? It answered us. <gasps> it behaves like it's really alive. Well, Coffee Maker, make coffee. It's impossible. Kitty, time for a little surprise. Just don't give up our secret. You fixed it somehow. What's your secret? It's simple. If you handle appliances with care, then they'll take care of you. <sighs> the magic taste of coffee was first appreciated in Arabia. And that's why the most well-known variety of coffee is called Arabica. Coffee trees grow throughout the world in mountain regions where the weather is warm and humid. The branches of coffee trees get covered with coffee berries. But to make the coffee drink, we don't need the berries, just the seeds inside. After the coffee beans are roasted and then ground, hot water is added. Different cultures serve coffee differently. Some serve it hot, some cold. With sugar, with milk, with ice cream, with cinnamon, with ginger, and even with salt and pepper. They say that coffee gives people energy and helps them from feeling tired. But it's important not to drink too much. Ah. Tom Thomas, you're a powerful wizard. <laughs> she believes it. <laughs> it's remarkable. I can't believe an ordinary coffee maker can be so emotional. <laughs> Poor thing. Forgive me, huh? And that's not all. If you take care of your coffee maker and you're nice to it, it can even... it can even... Sing a song. Oh, my dear Augustine, Augustine, Augustine. <laughs> I've got to be hearing things. <laughs> You've got me under your spell, Tom Thomas. Time to go, <laughs> Augustine. <laughs> oh, my dear Augustine, Augustine. Why did you start singing? Sorry, I got carried away. <laughs> and I got carried away. Sing me that song again, will you? Oh, my dear Augustine, Augustine, Augustine. Oh, my dear Augustine, everything's gone. The Backpack. All right, homework's all done. Time to play? Tom Thomas, is that how you pack your backpack? Why not? What's wrong with it? I don't know how you think you're going to find anything at all in there. I will, too. Then go and find your ruler. Here you go. An eraser? Hang on, I'll get it. Where is it? Uh, you can't find it. What a shame. It's because this backpack is so lousy. The backpack is just fine. If you don't want to lose anything, you gotta pack it carefully. Or have a pack mat that can just hand everything to you. Oh, yeah! That's just what I need a pack mat. Only fixies have pack mats. And I'm gonna have one. I'll make my own. <laughs> There's no way. Way? Because I'll help him do it. Sure, no look. A backpack is a bag with shoulder straps attached. It was invented to make it easier to carry heavy loads for long distances and also for freeing up the hands. Backpacks help us maintain good posture and avoid slouching by putting the load's weight onto our back muscles and our spine. And you can fit so many things into a backpack, especially if the backpack has lots of separate compartments and everything is packed nice and neatly. The first backpacks were quite heavy and uncomfortable. They were made out of wood and leather. These kinds of backpacks were worn by ancient hunters. Later on, lighter backpacks appeared that were made out of canvas and became quite popular with travelers and soldiers. Today's backpacks are so light that even kids can carry them. <laughs> Testing of the world's first pack mat design, especially for humans, begins! Ready? Ready to go! First thing out of your backpack, uh, I mean pack mat an eraser! Got it! Watch me! Cool. A pen! Your blue one! Got it! Tongue. 
did it. Take out the blue pen. Oh, wow. The ruler's next. He'll come later. Testing. All right, already. Let's get it started. Go ahead. The eraser. We've seen that twice already. The blue pen. Can you take out the ruler? Sure, I can. Drum roll, please. Whoa. It's not possible. Let me see. Hmm. Now I get it. Why don't you take out your science book? Science book. <laughs> Cuckoo, did you get the textbook? <laughs> There's no way. It's huge. Yeah. Some inventors you are. <laughs> your invention calls for a little improvement, and I know what it is. What? Just make sure that when you put things into your backpack, you do it neatly. Do it neatly. Takes forever and it's boring. I'm gonna show you how to make it fun. <laughs> Whenever it's a school day, a backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. Your pencils, books, and papers will fit inside indeed. Will fit inside, will fit inside, will fit inside indeed. Without a backpack on your back. Whenever you go hiking, a backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. Whatever you've collected will fit inside indeed. We'll fit inside, we'll fit inside, we'll fit inside indeed. Without a 